The other is the way in which the ice crystals are ordered, the way in which the individual molecules fit together. That fits a particular consistent pattern time and time again, tells me that God has designed it. There is also a spiritual application. As each snow crystal is distinctly patterned, so each human, each soul is unique and of special concern to our Lord. As God's creative hand forms ice crystals with loving care, so too He intends to form each person to reflect His glory. Compared to the rest of creation, snow crystals are simple, yet the great architect's attention, even to the countless snow crystals He forms each day, is an unmistakable mark of His care. God has built into not only ice crystals, all kinds of other molecules, all kinds of systems, relationships and processes that we don't even begin to fathom yet today. That's one of the reasons I'm a scientist. I love trying to find out how things function, how they operate, and apply mathematical equations to them because I feel like I'm touching the face of God, if you wish. If simple water molecules that form ice crystals exhibit magnificent structure, consider the design ingenuity behind large, complex molecules, such as DNA. DNA contains the blueprint for all life and is by far the densest information storage mechanism known in the universe. For example, the amount of information contained in a pinhead volume of DNA would fill a stack of books 500 times higher than from here to the moon. The program code and design of such an incredible system indicates a supremely intelligent designer. The evidence to me that just cries out that there's a God is the study of DNA. DNA is a very powerful, massive information storage system. In fact, DNA that makes up our genes actually is like books of information that's read by a language system. It's absolutely phenomenal. And scientists know today that language as a code only come from an intelligence, and information only comes from information. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to a code. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to information. And as you look at DNA, it actually cries out. In the beginning, God created the universe. We all begin as a single cell the size of a period at the end of a sentence. How does that cell know how to build a, a body with 100 trillion uh, cells in it, thousands of different kinds, and each one of them is so complex, nanochemical machinery beyond our comprehension how it works, and encoded is the, the instruction manual. It's the manufacturer's manual how to build and operate every part of this incredible body made up of 100 trillion cells. Furthermore, DNA is a three-dimensional molecule that is self-replicating. Each molecule is able to make an identical copy quickly and efficiently. The Lord has even programmed DNA to detect and correct replication errors. These sophisticated capabilities far exceed man's means. God has created the DNA molecule in such a way that it is self-correcting. There are special proteins called enzymes that go up and down the DNA molecule looking for and making repairs on a minute-by-minute, second-by-second basis. God created us with a DNA code that actually has what we call editase or editorial type enzymes. Just as an editor reads a newspaper or a book looking for mistakes, so God has created special enzymes enzymes that go up and down our DNA molecule, repairing the mistakes in ways that are unbelievably complex. There are many examples in creation of, of things that demonstrate the biblical God. Uh, one would be in our very DNA. Our DNA has information in it. And there is a whole field of scientific study called information science, which studies how information originates, how it's transmitted, and so on. And one of the laws of information science says that information never originates by itself. 
in matter, never spontaneously comes about. Anytime we trace uh, the copying of information back to its source, it always, it always comes back to a mind. And since we have creative information in DNA, that tells me that DNA comes from intelligence. It's not something that could possibly come about through millions of years of mutations and natural selection. That just won't work. Yet even the DNA molecule is simple compared to cells. All life consists of cells, and each cell functions as a miniature city. When we consider that a human body consists of trillions of cells working together as one unit, we should be in humble awe of our Creator's intimate care and perfect wisdom. Every seed is a miniature miracle. God has programmed the tiny sequoia seed to become the largest tree on earth, reaching nearly 300 feet tall and weighing many tons. God has designed the humble apple seed to yield a bounty of delicious fruit for years to come. And God has planned a multitude of seeds to produce spectacular blossoms in abundance. Consider the many varieties of seeds. As stated in Genesis, each seed always produces after its own kind. And just as the Lord intended, the fruits and byproducts that they bear have supplied the needed food and resources for man and his environment. In the first chapter of Genesis, God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit that yields fruit according to its kind whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. So the Creator made life with the ability to reproduce after its kind. Plants produce seed. This answers the question, which came first, the seed or the plant? Clearly, God created plant life with the seed in itself. Seeds are masterpieces of micro-miniaturization. <laughs> Inside each seed is a little baby, a little embryonic plant. It's already got leaves, you know, and a stem and a root. It's surrounded by a seed coat that protects it and filled with all kinds of receptors listening in to environmental signals so it knows what temperature, what moisture conditions, how much oxygen. All these things have to be present before it will sprout. And the first seeds we find as fossils look just like the seeds that we have today. The seed is the first reproductive structure God made on creation day three, and it's the way living things ever since have multiplied after kind. Today, scientists have discovered what Scripture stated all along. Inside the unassuming seed is life itself. Contained within are living cells, tiny factories of amazing complexity. No scientist has been able to build a synthetic seed, and no seed is simple. Seeds are programmed to remain dormant until water and warmth are available. Who installed this ability to monitor temperature and humidity? Who determined the proper time for the seed to germinate? Who told the root, you must go down, and the stem, you must head upward? Do you see the guiding hand of our all-loving Creator? In order to sprout and thrive, seeds require the proper soil nutrients, the ideal properties found in water, the correct frequency spectrum of light, the right atmosphere, and the necessary pollinators. All of these must have been in place from the beginning in order for seeds to yield a harvest of blessings for mankind. 